Very good. Uh, let's go now to Josh in Evansville, Indiana, watching on YouTube. Josh, thanks for joining us on YouTube. Uh, your question for Trent Horn. Hi, thanks. Um, what I'm wondering is how do you explain to someone why being Catholic is important or why it's important to be Catholic in the first place? Like, I'm Catholic myself. Yeah. I know it's true, but getting the the importance of following the truth across to someone because they just seem seem like they just don't care. Yeah. Well, I guess it would depend who they are. Um, are you saying just to anyone, or do you have a particular person in mind? Well, mainly other Christians. Um, like yeah. I've I've talked with them a little bit. Like they've they've asked me, well, why do Catholics believe this? And I kind of start to explain, and then their eyes kind of gloss over. Yeah. <laughs> And I, I if we, they just they don't seem to really care. If why. we all they believe in, happen. yeah, they say if we all believe in Jesus, isn't that enough? Basically, right, yeah. yeah. And then I'm just like, and I I've tried to explain. Well, no, you have this, and we have this, and he said to do this, but they're just like, well, eh, I don't care. I guess what I would say to them is that if they're Christians, I would say to them, should we care about what Jesus said? Should we care? about what Jesus wants for us and what his plan is for the body of Christ. Should we care about that? How do we know what God wants from us? And if they say, well, all you have to do is believe in Jesus, I'd say, well, where does the Bible say that? That's all you have to do. It is something you, you have to do. You have to, we're called, we're saved by faith, but where does the Bible say we, we only do that? And then just try to, to share with them to say, well, why we're Catholic, we can offer a testimony. And a thing I like to share is just the power of grace, to talk about how God's grace, God's divine life is transformative. It makes me a child of God, and it transforms and renews me and anyone else who receives it to make us holy, just as our Father in heaven is holy. And that to continue on that pursuit of holiness, it's not something we can do. It's something we accept. Uh, we don't even, even if we accept it, God's working through us to do that. The only thing we can do in our own power is to reject that grace and to say, no, I choose to not do that, but to let God pour his grace into my heart to transform me. And he's given us a way to do that that's not just saying a prayer and hoping for the best. It's about saying God understands that I am matter and that matters. God gives us the water of baptism, the bread and wine of the Eucharist, the voice and presence of the priest in confession. He gives us physical objects so we can have an assurity of grace being transmitted to us to renew and change us and make us holy. So I, I might talk to them a bit about that, say, well, what did Jesus say? Did Jesus give us a church, or did he just give us a Bible? Well, what's the pillar and foundation of truth? Ask them that. What's the pillar and foundation of truth? And it's not the Bible. First Timothy 3.15 says it's the church. And did God give us a church where we decide how it goes, or did he build it on apostles and they anointed successors and left them to us so that we wouldn't have to figure everything out from the Bible and hope we get it right, but that God has given us a church to teach us and lead us into truth and to lead us into that grace-filled life into salvation. So that's what I might say why it matters so much, that so why would we want to say no to the grace God has given us? And if you want a bit more on that, like the Eucharist or baptism, my book Why We're Catholic covers that, so definitely check it out. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you very much uh, for that call. Uh